I took a risk buying the Hot Toys Devil Lock figure box Char Aznable military uniform version because I hadn't seen a review of it. I may be the very first person to review what is essentially the Hot Toys 1-6 scale Char Aznable from of course Mobile Suit Gundam, specifically the original Mobile Suit Gundam series. And uh, I love this. It's great. It is an awesome figure. Uh, as far as I know, it is one of the only articulated figures of Char Aznable, our good old boy Casval Rem Daikun, that you can buy. Uh, it's it's not a cheap figure. I th believe this item was limited to about 7,000 pieces. I spent about $110 on mine, uh, which honestly isn't a bad price for a Hot Toys. And uh, for being a figure from 2005, I think this is a very, very great figure. Uh, I, I pretty much have no complaints. I really have no complaints with it. Uh, but before we talk about the figure itself, which is, of course, like you can see, a 1-6 scale, you know, collectible figure like Hot Toys... The box definitely gives it away that it's kind of like a Hot Toys sort of product. So, Char Aznable, uh, military uniform version. There's the civilian uniform version, uh, his white suit that he had during uh, Gear and Speech. Uh, but you can see on the front here, you have a uh, very nice kind of outlined art of Char. The box on mine's kind of dinged up. And then again, it is a 15-year-old figure, as you can see down there, so I wouldn't uh, blame. I wouldn't blame the condition. It is branded Bandai. You can see Char Aznable on the side and the Xeon logo in the back. You can see right there, mine is 3,731 out of 7,000. You can see it was branded by Bandai, but it is a Hot Toys and Devil Lock. Uh, as far as I know, Devil Lock uh, designed it, and they specifically designed the package, but Hot Toys produced and manufactured. So it's pretty much made by Hot Toys. So from here on out, it's going to be referred to as Hot Toys Char Aznable. And right there, you can see right there, a little uh, official Gundam logo. Then you slip it out. And then just showing you, there is the manual, and he's just kind of encased in a simple twisty tie sort of uh, tray here. So I just figured I'd show you the box, because hey, it's a box, and this little piece of plastic uh, that cracked. You can see that crack right No, you can't. Right there, there's a crack in the plastic. There's a crack in the plastic, oh no. Thankfully, even though the box was in pretty bad shape, my Char Aznable came in pretty good shape. Uh, there was one issue right out of the box. And that was uh, one of the soles of his shoes was unglued. Uh, it was just unglued. The glue had come undone. Uh, and thankfully, because it was just glue, put some more glue on there, and it's all fine. So he does not come with a display stand, unfortunately. I'm using one of my own stands. But he can stand pretty okay on his own. Uh, I wouldn't really say you need a display stand, but for me, I, I like having my high-end 1-6 scale stuff on display stand, so he will stay on this stand for a while. Uh, so, as you can see, I love posing him with a, with a salute, because, come on, it's freaking Char. Garma, I'm sending your sister to join you. Oh, bro. Uh, but yeah, uh, he is very, very nice looking. Uh, as you can see, he has a two-piece helmet. He has a velvet cape. Let's take a look at his uh, cloth here. He has very nice stitching for the Xeonic logos here. Uh, that doesn't, that isn't connecting. It should kind of be connecting right there, that part of the costume, but it still looks really fine to me. The epaulets are gorgeous. Look at the epaulets. And you can get them laying really nice. Kind of get them not, you know, going across each other, and the epaulets look glorious. And like I said, his cape is velvet, uh, so I would be careful about hairs and everything and getting stuff on it, but you can see it's a velvet cape. And I have lint rolled it a couple times. So uh, just gently lint roll it and it'll get all that hair off of it. I did lint roll it before the review. Uh, but yeah, you can see, look at his gloves. He's got these really nice gloves. Really like those multi-textured gloves. He does have real straps on the gloves to remove them. But you can't just pull them off without that. Uh, I really love his suit underneath. You can see all these pouches and things. Unfortunately, I don't think you can open the pouches or the uh, the buttons. At least I didn't try. At least I don't want to try. It seems like they're just kind of sewn in. Yeah, you can see it's just kind of sewn in. It's not a real button. I wish it was, but it is not. Uh, so, talking about the rest of the costume, his belt is impressive. So his belt is kind of made out of like a watch band material. Like it's actual linked stuff. And he has this little kind of gun right here, which can come off. And he can hold this, and I will show you holding him, or holding that in a second here. But I want to talk about the belt. Because the belt, how to unlatch that, just right there. P press it together, then pull it out. And then the belt is removed, and you are left with this very, very nice belt. You can see it's, it is, it, I don't think it's metal. I think it's like a nice, durable plastic. 
but it is very nice quality. It's very nicely painted. It's all nice and glossy. I love the belt. So if you do end up buying this thing, make sure he is not missing his belt uh, because that's definitely a very nice detail that you want to have with your Shaw Asnable. He's the Red Comet after all. Red Comets need uh, a belt to uh, conceal their Red Comet. Uh, anyways, yeah, just getting that back on there. Not too much of a hassle. It just kind of stretches out. Uh, so yeah, that is the belt. Uh, and then his pants. Pretty basic pants. But he does have some nice stitching along the sides and some uh, straps. And his boots are really nice too. Like I said, the soles are separate pieces that needed glued on. Uh, they may come off at some point again. Uh, but he does have zippers too. He does have zippers to uh, unzip the boots. I'm not going to take the boots off, but you can unzip the boots. Uh, so yeah, um, he looks great. He looks absolutely great. Uh, let's talk about his helmet, because that helmet is superb. Stop saluting, Shaw. You need to start revealing your true identity. So yeah, you can see the hair poking in pretty accurate places, too. That's pretty much how his hair was in the anime. Uh, even though I feel like one thing that's not super anime accurate, I don't feel like you saw that much of the mask from the back. But you know what? It's fine. I feel like the helmet is kind of supposed to droop down a little more like Darth Vader. But it's no biggie. Helmet's a very nice material. Uh, I'd definitely be careful of the horns. But just pull that off. And here you have his mask. And you can kind of lift it up if you want to give him more of an anime accurate kind of like longer uh, bridge of his nose showing. It's kind of up to you. But me personally, I just kind of like it down. But yeah, you can also take the mask, which is kind of like a softer plastic. Pull that off. And you are left with blue-eyed Casval. Good old Casval. Aw, look at him. Such a pretty boy who wants to commit mass murder someday. Not today, though. Today he just wants to avenge his family. But yeah, man, look at that. Ooh, that is not a bad head at all. Especially for 2005, trying to portray an anime character. I think that's really good. I really like the eyes there. Let's zoom in a little bit more. The eyes look great. It really looks like a doll. And I really like that. Because I fully embrace that these are dolls, right? This is a doll. I don't care. Um, and I kind of like his dollish looking face. It's very kind of anime faithful. It's very... It, it kind of just expresses the culture of a Japanese product like this. You can kind of get the helmet on. You can kind of get it on a little further back if you want. Maybe that'll help conceal the mask a bit. Nah, a little bit. But yeah, I love, love, love the helmet and mask. Uh, let's talk about his articulation, because he's actually very well articulated, especially for a figure as old as he is. So his head is on a very nice ball joint. Uh, you can have it looking up a bit, you can have it looking down a lot. And you can have it tilt a little bit. More this way than that way, which is funny, and swivel, of course. His shoulders, he's kind of doing a weird thing there. His shoulders are on butterflies, and can move out. He does have a double jointed elbow, and a bicep swivel. His wrists are um, very similar to like a, you know, like a, like a pretty much a 1-6 scale wrist, how it can swivel in different ways. Like this one you can see is going in and out. This one is going up and down. Uh, his fingers, though, let's talk about his fingers, because his hands are rubbery hands. Uh, and uh, you can pretty much pose his fingers however you want. They are just rubbery. Uh, be careful about the material of the glove. But yeah, you can kind of squish it. You can kind of get it straighter, you can get it not in the great fist, but you can sort of get a fist out of it. But one thing I do want to note, the stitching of the glove, a, a whole fake knuckle is pretty much invented by the upper stitching of the glove. Like that right there is this pure glove, the finger is actually there. So the, the hand underneath looks like a normal hand, but the glove does kind of make it look a little oven midi. If that's a word, is now, you understand what I'm talking about. But you can see I can kind of pinch the fingers, you kind of get it looking nice. Like me personally, I really love having this arm holding his belt. You can kind of get it contorted to hold his belt. And that hand I usually like just saluting. So you do have that for the hands. The waist is kind of, I don't, I'm not sure, man. Oh, I don't want to touch that too much. It's kind of like on a, like a ball. I think it's on a ball in there, but I'd be, I'd be careful. The legs can spread out about that far with the costume. They can move forward about that far with the costume. Double jointed knee which is not bad, even though I do want to note the kneecaps on him are very large. You can see his very large kneecaps, so that's something interesting. And his feet can move up and down. They might be able to pivot, they might be on a similar hinge as the wrist, but with that boot there, 
I wouldn't really risk it. And also, he's Shar Aznable. He's, he's pretty much just going to stand there as a military officer. He's not really... I mean, you could get him in more dynamic poses with his gun, which I will do that right now. So showing you how I usually have him holding his gun. You get that the thumb out a little bit, and you take his pointer finger and just close it off. Then you can kind of get the gun in there and then get his other fingers kind of fully closed. And then, with just the friction and all the bendiness, there you go. He is holding his little gun, his very weird little thin gun that looks like a toothpick. And uh, now he can do that. Um, did he ever use this? I'm pretty sure he did. I think he, like, he swung it by his hip. I think that's what he usually did. He usually had it, like, down at his hip. Yeah, that's. I think that's what he did. I'm pretty sure that's how he used it. But yeah, uh, I really do like that accessory, and it can just... Make sure it's clipped with the handle facing back, but it can clip in there. And hopefully that doesn't break someday. I don't think it will. It seems really durable. But yeah, there we go. There's the Hot Toys figure box. Uh, 2005, one six scale Char Aznable military uniform version. Um, I've, I'm surprised there's not a bigger market for this. Because see, me as a Gundam fan, I've been wanting articulated figures of my favorite characters for a very long time. Char is my absolute favorite. And I really like the one six scale. So naturally, one six scale Char Aznable was a no-brainer for me. I didn't know this was made by Hot Toys before I ordered it. Uh, it says figure box Char Aznable. I'm like, uh, whatever figure box is, I guess Bandai made it. It might be garbage. I don't know. But no. Produced and manufactured by Hot Toys. So this is a Hot Toys Char Aznable. And I couldn't recommend it enough. For a figure that is 15 years old, I feel like it still stands up so well today. I don't feel like it needs an update or anything. I feel like it just needs a re-release. The costume is great. Maybe, maybe don't give him... Uh, maybe, maybe don't give him rubbery, articulated finger hands. Maybe just give him alternate hands. Maybe give him a different head. I don't know, but I I think this is great, and I highly recommend it if you want it. Uh, the range, the price range can vary from a little over hundred dollars to like close to two hundred. I would I would pay maybe around a hundred, like what I did. It's great, but it's not like modern Hot Toys great. It's not like Hot Toys Iron Man great. But I do love it. I really do love this figure, and I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, some last comparisons, though, if you're kind of curious, like, hey, how does this scale with other stuff? So here it is with the Master Grade uh, Zaku 2. So you can see uh, he's uh, he's pretty big. He, I mean, he's a 12-inch figure. What do you expect? And here he is with his son. This can be like, you can hold him like a little baby. Wouldn't that be funny? Um, but yeah, there he is with the new SD Zaku 2. So yeah, there we go. I really love this thing. Like I said, I highly, highly recommend it. Alrighty, guys, that is it. Uh, have a good day. See Gazeon. And um, go out and get yourself a Char Asnable doll. Why not?